Welcome and thank you for joining Andre Renee's Creative Cafe. This is a show that focuses on the arts and the artist's God-given talent. We strongly believe that you are your passion. And so uh, I have a few sad notes before I begin. Um, I have a friend, and more than likely she's your friend as well, Marshall, Sm Marshall Smith, Marshall Smith and the Smith family. Marsha, she lost her, her mother, and we're praying for her. So we all know that you know, death happens, and we grieve, but it just doesn't take away the pain. So we here at Andre Renee's Creative Cafe, we want to let you know that we love you, that we're praying for you and the Smith family. So may God ease this grieving process for you, and anything that we could do for you, please let us know. So the, to the Smith family, we're with you. God bless you. Also, we want to ask that you keep our public servants in, in your prayers, like our guest today, whom you will find now. People that's doing positive for the community, the devil will really try to attack them. So we pray that God give us that hedge, the same hedge that he gave Joel, and made, even new and improved. So we ask that God be with those of us that's in the public field, that's doing right, that's doing positive things to the community. That does include police officers, that includes nurses, that includes pastors, that includes people that volunteer. We pray that God be with you in Jesus' name. So God bless you, Smith family. We're going to hold you up. We love you. So today on our show, we have Grace Beyond Borders, Mr. Marcus Martin. Say hello to our people. Hello, I'm happy to be here, and I'm grateful to be on your uh, program today. Indeed. Um, for I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. We're talking from Matthew, the book of Matthew. And that's the study Bible, people. So that's not the King James. And so, you know, they love their these and thou's. And so that's who you are. So would you tell people what you do? Yes. Thank you uh, again for allowing me to be here to mm -hmm. talk about the work that God has called me to do. Mm -hmm. And you named, you said feeding, you, you, you gave me meat when I was hungry. You Indeed. said when I was thirsty, and you said when I was a stranger, you took me in. Well, mm -hmm. that's the one part we have not accomplished in terms of having a place where we come in contact mm -hmm. with people. We go out on the streets. We do something unique that you will not find anyone else doing. We go out on the streets. Uh, I'm going to say not 24-7, but we're out on the streets uh, every week. We're out, on, out there in the front line of where homeless yes. exist. Indeed. We're not behind a desk and waiting for people to come to us. Mm -hmm. And one critical part I want to say, uh, uh, I describe us as the feet, the legs of the body of the church. Amen. Before we jump into exactly what all you do, give us your background. Okay, uh, I grew up in uh, East Chicago, Indiana. Mm -hmm. I graduated from uh, Washington High School. Okay. And uh, from there, I went to Texas Christian University uh, thinking I would become a professional football player. That okay. was my goal. Okay. <laughs> and uh, after a year and a half, and I did score a touchdown against Baylor, which I, okay. uh, I feel uh, great about, having at least something in the books. Okay. But... Uh, that fell through, and what happened was I had to take another look at what God was calling me to do because mm -hmm. I was, at that time, introduced to Jesus Christ on the campus, and I hadn't grown up in church, so I knew very little. Mm -hmm. And it's during that time that uh, God actually began to work with me as I look back and uh, moved me into a, a different direction, but I earned my degree while I was there. Mm -hmm. And I returned to uh, this uh, uh, to Northwest Indiana, and I began working in recreation and after-school programs, okay. and and really looking at the poverty, the uh, destitute, and looking at the situations of, of people that I was encountering, the obstacles, the challenges, and I began to have a passion uh, uh, in that arena. Okay, all right. But God took it to another area. Indeed. And I began to work with our homeless outreach ministry of the Apostolic Church of God mm -hmm. in church in Chicago. The Braziers, right? Yes. Right, right. And first, uh, Bishop Arthur Embrasier is what attracted me there. His teaching on the radio at 9 o'clock uh, p.m. Mm -hmm. at night when I got off from work from the Boys and Girls Club. Okay. And that's when I heard his teaching and I became attracted to that and I ended up 
that becoming my church home. But it was there, I was introduced to a ministry, Feeding the Homeless with Christ Outreach Ministry, uh, headed up by Wendell and Diana Kendricks, and, and, and a whole new world opened up to me. So while in church, why, and at this time you're saved, you're sanctified, the Holy Spirit is upon you, right? Yes. And, and while you're doing this and working for the Boys and Girls Club, you, went, you were introduced to this new world of helping people. Uh, a minister, the definition, the simple definition of a minister is a servant. He's here to serve you. And so that's, that's what's your true calling to be a servant to the people. And this happened with the Braziers. Yes, it did, and that's why I was trained at. And actually, you learn uh, the, the Feeding Homeless for Christ Outreach Ministry was an uh, on the street ministry. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it took me out on the streets, and I ended up at 63rd in Cottage Grove, 47th in Cottage Grove, uh, and, and other locations, Allgill Park on the west side, Union Park. So I had a very strong introduction and training mm -hmm. in working with that homeless population, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize the magnitude of the homeless situation until I was there. So when I came, when I started looking in Northwest Indiana, it did not look like Chicago. Right, indeed. So I did really do some research, and so I, I started our own organization, my own organization, Grace Beyond Borders, Amen. in 2013. And we started on the streets, mm -hmm. out every day. On I spent a lot of time on the streets, just really looking. Okay, is does homelessness exist in East Chicago, and primarily? And I began to be exposed, and it began to uncover the invisible population that exists, right. and that homelessness was not lying down in, on the streets necessarily. It was some of that, but. It was hidden. It was. It was in abandoned buildings, abandoned garages, uh, on people's uh, uh, back porches. Right. Wow. And and, wow. and just so many different places. I have over 30 locations of where homeless individuals, women, children, and men have slept. Wow. When Facebook is very powerful. And I was scrolling down my news feed. This is before we ever met. And I was scrolling down my news feed, and I saw the inside of East Chicago Police Department. I knew what it was because my best friend works there. And so he gave me, I did it when he first was hired on, he gave me a tour. So I remember the place, and I'm hearing your voice, and you told a guy, you're loved. You're loved. I need you to know you're loved. So I was a little confused, so I watched the video just a little further. And that's how I discovered who you were. Now, I didn't know we had uh, Chelsea Stalin. Um, in common at the time. And so um, that was, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago. Or whenever it was, it's when it was. But it's like, this guy's doing great things. One of these days, I'm going to have to reach out to him and see if I and my ministry could be of assistance to you guys. When we come back from these commercial breaks, I want you to explain the term, the invisible people. These commercial breaks are brought to you by Insurance Exchange, located in South Holland, Illinois. Please ask for Brandy. Hey guys, thank you for joining Andre Renee's Creative Cafe. And we are here today with Mr. Marcus Martin, Grace Beyond Borders founder. And he is going to explain his terminology uh, in the, in the invisible people. Yes, we have an invisible population, and let me explain why. Yes. Let me give you an example. On Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. early in the morning, 2 o'clock a.m. in the morning, with my wife's permission, I went out. Okay. My first stop was at the police station to see who was sleeping there so that I can go back at uh, five, between 5 and 5.30 and take some coffee and a uh, breakfast sandwich to them and right. begin to have some dialogue with them and see what the needs were. So I stopped there and I saw several individuals in that uh, police station and some sitting up sleeping or whatever. but. Uh, I also went to the other side of town and I saw a gentleman walking in the intersection of Indianapolis Boulevard and Chicago Avenue. And I just observed, what, why is this gentleman out here like mm -hmm. this? But I went on and I went back to the house, slept a little bit more, and I went out at 5 and I went back and I took some breakfast there. But then after that, I went to the other side of town. And uh, long story short, while I was there, I saw this gentleman again mm -hmm. walking with would look like a blanket in his hand. Right. And so I rolled down the window of my van and said, excuse me, have you had breakfast this morning? 
And he shook his head, and I said, would you like to join me for breakfast? And he said, yes. And he said he wanted to put his blanket away. Now, he's walking toward abandoned property. Mm -hmm. So we meet. We have breakfast. I do an intake, a survey intake. But I asked him, I said, well, where'd you sleep last night? He said, outside. Mm -hmm. Now, it was in the single digits uh, Christmas Eve. Wow. Early morning. So I said, well, where? And he says, uh, 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 by this building. I said, can you show me? So we went out, and there were two buildings. There was an empty lot. There was one building, an empty lot, and another building. Okay. Uh, right on the main boulevard. And he showed me where he was lying down um, by the building. Exposed it to broke, the It broke my heart. Right. And the reason he was walking around at 2 in the morning is because he got cold. So he could walk to generate heat. But see, no one saw him there. This is the invisible. You don't see where people are sleeping. You don't right. see. So right. we began to research and we began to ask that question, well, where did you sleep last night is an mm -hmm. important question we ask. And some people will be uh, willing to and some are so full of shame that they, they, are, they really don't want to share that information. And we respect that. But we began to uncover so many people out there. We said, we... It became a, a situation where we look, we're going out on the streets, but we have nothing to give them. Right. Okay. We don't have a bill. We don't have a facility to house them to be able to give them some relief, be able to give them an opportunity to have a pl safe place to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. And so this is why we have a campaign going because we need. It's it's tough. Yeah. It's right. tough. Right. Right. It's tough. It's, it's amazing how you will have such a heart to do what you're doing. When you saw this gentleman, and was this one of your first, because that's my question, uh, my next question, do you remember your very first rescue? Okay, we're going back to 2013. Right. And I'm sitting in a public library, and I'm doing my planning. I'm getting this Grace Beyond Borders uh, okay. on board, and that spirit in me said, you're not spending enough time on the streets. Mm. And I said, okay. I packed up everything and I went out. And there was a gentleman at a bus stop mm -hmm. in Chicago. And we began to have some dialogue. And I said, would you like to join me for uh, something to eat? And so we went. Eventually, we went and we sat down. And we and began to cease a lot of pain, mm -hmm. a lot of hurt. And so we just had some prayer right there in Subway. We're in the right. Subway. Right. And began to pray, and and and, this, and I saw a, t a transformation right in front of me mm -hmm. of this gentleman who went from a very negative talk to a whole different talk that did not include anything negative anymore. Right. And so that began my operation on the streets. Mm -hmm. And I want to say the first rescue uh, uh, was with a woman who came to me in the park one day. She says. I've been looking for you. Mm. She said, I know uh, 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 somebody had your number. And I said, but okay. She said, I'm, 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 I need to get off these streets. I need to get, uh, and we're talking to uh, uh, someone who's been addicted for years to cocaine. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know whether this person was really ready to go or right. wasn't sure. I said, well, okay, in the morning, we'll take you over to Chicago. And so what happened was uh, she was. Wow. And to this very day, uh, big support to me and, and very involved in our Celebrate Recovery program and just awesome, awesome person. Was this the lady you were talking about earlier before the show who donates, who was rescued by you and now she donates to you? Right. That was recent. That was back in August when we rescued her. Uh, but we had worked with her three years prior. Right, year. right. Uh, and so that was enough. And, 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 and I, I'm telling you, you just don't know the feeling. Uh, uh, um, I know it's not, you know, they say men don't cry, but oh, uh, uh, I'm crying. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but I yeah, because right. she emotion. came back. Right. This meant so much right. to her. I mean, right. and, and here's where the rescue took place. See, sometimes we don't know what to say and how to do it, mm -hmm. but the Holy Spirit does. Right, indeed. And she said, you know, she came, you know, she came to my, we finally got her in place into our office. Mm -hmm. And I said to the staff, said, she's a priority. Right. She's going right. to be here. So what happened was she, um, she came and I said, you know what, if something happens, I've known you for three years, if something has happened to you, something happens to you, it will crush me. Right. Indeed. 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 And so she moved forward and did everything we asked her to do, mm -hmm. and she's in a much better place. She's doing excellent. Wow. And we communicate almost every day on this journey that she's on, but she's in a program in mm -hmm. South Bend and doing, and she's 
And today she texted me and said, did you see my donation? <laughs> <laughs> she said it's going to be a monthly donation. Amen. So, the look at God. And, and that's what I'm saying. So as we move forward and toward, you know, uh, 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 I, I don't sleep at night well. And, and something I'm going to do, and I can share it here uh, uh, for the first time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be in the month of November kicking off on November 9th, I will be sleeping outdoors mm -hmm. in, in various locations with a homeless individuals that I've met that, I, that have come through our program and, and I'm going to sleep where they sleep. Uh, right. I'm going to sleep and you so right. some of these places, are, uh, one of the first places since it's going to be uh, you know, Veterans Day uh, around that time, I'm going to sleep on, uh, under a bridge uh, near a railroad track. Mm -hmm where a gentleman, uh, Air Force veteran, just slept. Now, I'm not looking forward to sleeping outdoors, right. but if that's what it takes to bring this message about where people are, that this population is out there, and the, uh, and I need a response from people. Mm -hmm. I need people to come forward right. and, and respond. Yeah. There's no reason why right. we should not have a, a, a facility for people to go in. Right. Now, there's one issue we're battling, you know, there's a lot of stereotypes about homelessness. And everybody got an opinion. You can get 10 people in this room here and everybody, oh, I think the homeless are. Some people, they don't, they want to be out there. They don't want any right, help. Right. Well, okay, that's true, but that's not everybody. Indeed. What Indeed. about the individuals who want to, the individual, individuals we encounter who mm -hmm. want to be off the streets? Indeed. I agree. That's statistically speaking, you're three paychecks away from destitution. And destitution can mean a loss of a car because if you don't have a car, how can you go to work? So you eventually will lose your job. But then if you lose your job, so the average American don't have more than three paychecks in their bank account saved. And you cannot include your credit cards because they can cut those off at any time. So while we're at home and you're eating your wonderful meal or you're looking at, or no, when you're listening to us, let's be clear. So everybody's at home listening to us. We're, 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 clear, we're clear about that. So while you're listening to us and enjoying the show, look around you. This three paychecks away from being under a bridge. We have, some people have family, some people don't. So it's, we're not ignorant to the fact, we just, it's easy for us to look away because it's a, 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 negative, uh, a negative side to that. People think if you are homeless, that's something you're drug addicted or you're crazy or it's not true. It's not true at all. So we need people like you. I, am I correct when I say that Chicago has cleared Laura Wacker? Now that's no longer a safe ha haven for uh, the homeless? I'm not sure, but I tell you this, though. One thing I know and I'm sure of is if they did clear, they're living under uh, other overpasses. Right. If you oh, get right, off at right. Canal Port, right. which I get off sometimes, you know, to avoid the traffic down there, you're going to see them all camped out there. You go in various locations, you're going to see more, I see more and more people on the streets in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And when, when I look, everything is, you know, what happens here in Northwest Indiana is a reflection also of what's going on in Chicago, Indeed. the largest city. We, we, you know, we mirror Chicago and the West Coast. Chicago mirrors what's going on in the West Coast. Right. People are struggling. People who are working can are homeless mm -hmm. because they cannot afford the rent. They cannot afford right. housing. So you got people who are struggling every day. And when these people come to us and we're looking like we're trying our best to help them out, everybody can move to Chicago to Pacific Garden Mission. They are right. working over here and right. they have to Indeed. get to their jobs. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's just us responding, you know, only speak to the people that have compassion, mm -hmm. that have the love of God in them. Indeed. Faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. I'm only speaking to those who have compassion to respond, to go on. We, we have, a, 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 our campaign is, 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 is a, a online mm -hmm. a, and it's simple. The, T-H-E, Face of Grace. Right. Uh, dot org. When we come back it's from this commercial break, mm -hmm. let's talk about that. Okay. okay guys. Thank you for joining Andre Renee's Creative Cafe. And we're now going to talk about the, the working homeless, the people that have a job, your accounting and experiences with them. There's so many of them, you, you would not believe that, you know, it's, it's, and, and we have what we call couch, couch surfing. Mm. Stacking. I've heard that before. You have so many individuals right. who are living in one apartment and right. then the landlord finds out and they're, they're being evicted because right. 
we, you know, there's only supposed to be one family in here or, or a single person and you got people stacking who are trying to survive and with nowhere to go and just simply having a place for them would relieve a lot of that. Indeed. People have a lot of fear, and, and, you know, when it comes to just all fear mm -hmm. instead of love to operate in the situations when people are getting help. When people are, you know, getting a chance to get on their feet, they become productive. Mm -hmm. They become better in your community, but keeping them in situations where they are not able to have a place. So, we, we, we're, you know, this is why I'm going to be out in 30 different locations uh, uh, sleeping, and, 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 and we're going to be broadcasting it. I have to do it. If this is what it takes mm -hmm. to get people to understand where this is a invisible population is and, and the hardship... There's so many people, and then their families. I've had people come to me and say, can you get this individual out of, out of our house? Indeed. You know, they, I helped right. them out, but now right. they have to go. Right. We, have, we hear a lot of that. Right, I get that. And we have to respond. So we can't, even though we don't have a place for home, we can't turn them away. We have to try to work and find them a location, a place. People are sleeping in their vehicles. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to sleep anywhere out. You're not allowed? No. People have told me, hey, the police come along and say, oh, right, you, right, have right. To, you have to go. You, if I right. come back here and you're here, you're, you're going to get arrested. So people got to hide out. Right, indeed. I'm because saying that. They say you can't sleep here, but they never tell you where you can. Right, indeed. And this, there's not a place. This is a big thing that you're doing, man, and we love what you're doing. We stand behind you. When you do go out in November, give us a shout so we can tell our listeners where you are so we could be supportive. Maybe we could bring you some food and maybe we could turn the things around so you have that experience. We have a segment on the show. It's called What Would Jesus Do? And what would Jesus say to the rich countries that still have poor? And what would Jesus say to the rich man who doesn't help the poor? How would you respond to that? Well, it's very clear. I mean, the word is very clear. Uh, Jesus had a lot to say about the poor. Indeed. And about our response. Mm -hmm. And to the point in, in Proverbs, is very clear about, you know, that he equated helping the poor with righteousness. Indeed. And so that's what we're looking at. You know, there's three different ways people can be supportive, mm -hmm. if I can share that. Mm -hmm. Then go on the face the faceofgrace.org and click on the donate button there. Yes. Or if they don't know how to do that, they can always come to 513 West Chicago Avenue Indeed. where you came Indeed. in East Chicago, Indiana, Indeed. and certainly drop off a check to Grace Beyond Borders. Indeed. We're inside of Salvation Army, but we're, we have some separate space in there. Also, they can uh, uh, put it, drop it in the mailbox to po Grace Beyond Borders, uh, Post Office Box 927, East Chicago, Indiana, 46312. Indeed. Or they can come out. We will identify some of the places we're sleeping at and then come out right then and drop off. We'll be broadcasting live and they can drop off a check or, or, or cash or however they want to do right. it on during that time. But we're going to raise the money Indeed. because we're going to reach out far. And I noticed there's got to be over 10,000 plus people who do care and who will give a $5 gift. Mr. Martin, I bid you much success. I'm in your corner. I was happy when we were able to present you guys with a check. I'd seen what you were doing there. They were getting fed while I was there. I wanted a plate myself, to tell you the truth, because they was getting fed wonderfully. So, listen, people, Andre Renee's Creative Cafe is a show all about your passion. You hear his passion. You know what he's doing. Stand behind him. Donate to his non-for-profit. I've seen it with my own eyes, what he is doing. We all know someone who needs help. Let's direct them. Do what Jesus would do. He would perform in love. And that's what we need to be doing. So God bless you. Tune in every Sunday at 6.30 under Renee's Creative Cafe. God bless you. And thank you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Andre.